Hey guys, Rob here, and I want to do a video response to a video that the Next News Network put out a few days ago called How Does the U.S. Constitution Protect Us by constitutional scholar Dr. Edwin Vieira. Uh, now, before I start, I do love the Next News Network. I watch them a lot. Uh, I love their news coverage. It's so much better than the mainstream media. Um, they have great pro-liberty oriented shows that are syndicated like Mike Salvi's World and Free Talk Live. I'm a fan, and I'm making this video from love, not hate. Just throwing it out there first. But when they put out a video that's so pro-government, I feel the need to say something. Okay, as regards to Dr. Edwin Vieira, uh, they say he's a constitutional scholar. I'll be honest, I have no idea. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. Uh, I do think that he has liberty at his heart, so is the Next News Network. But anyone can read the Constitution. You don't have to be a scholar. Um, now, in the beginning of the video, he talks about how uh, the Constitution protects liberty and how there's a delegation of limited power. My thing is, who gave Congress and the executive branch these powers? You, know, you would say, well, that goes back to the uh, uh, Constitutional Convention. Well, the Constitutional Convention, let's be honest, for me, I view it as pretty much a military coup d'etat of its time. I mean, here comes Washington with his militia, and he's got Hamilton on his side, they got the Federalists, and they bring in all these uh, banksters and politicians, the elite of its day, and they put them in one building, and there's no press coverage for months about it. Press aren't allowed in, nothing. And somehow they come out with this document, and not even all the colonies even ratify it, but somehow it's the law of the land. Uh, the the uh, government beforehand, the Articles of Confederation, there wasn't a vote to do this. They just did it. All right? And even if you disagree with me about it being a coup d'etat, they threw out the old government without even going to the government. They went outside of that to do it. All right? Imagine today if a bunch of liberals and conservatives got together in one building for months on end and came out with a new document and they just tossed the entire federal government and the constitution. There'd be riots in the streets if something like that happened. All right, but that's what they did back then. Um, anyways, I wanna list these powers of Congress uh, that are in Article One, Section 8 of the Constitution because anyone who's a constitutionalist you can't, if you're a constitutionalist, you can't be a cafeteria constitutionalist. You either support the constitution or you don't, period, all right? And there are multiple powers that are given to Congress that I completely disagree with, all right? So here we go. Article 1, Section 8, the powers of Congress. Line 1, line 1, the, con the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes otherwise known as theft. Somehow, people hundreds of years ago wrote this down on a piece of paper, and people in a far off land, known as Washington DC, have the authority to steal from you for the rest of your life. Uh, I'm not just talking about income tax, because that's a you know 16th Amendment. I'm saying just in, in transactions or any other, whatever they think is, that they can get away with in taxation. Taxation, in my opinion, it doesn't matter at what level or what instance it's done at, it's still being, it's still income being stolen away from you because you're using your income to do something. All taxation is a taxation on income and all taxation is theft, regardless. No one has the authority to steal from you. If I can't steal from you, why does people that you've never met that call themselves Congress have the ability to do so either? Um, and also on a side tangent, all you conservatives out there, uh, that's the line one also has a general welfare clause. I completely disagree with how liberals use that. And when they say it's constitutional with all the health care stuff and all that jazz. But nonetheless, that's where they're getting it from. Um, skipping ahead, line three, the commerce clause. Uh, Congress can regulate commerce among the states and foreign nations and all that jazz. Uh, now, don't constitutionalists, don't go flying off the handle and say, well, that's because, you know, at the time that meant to make regular, not to regulate. It doesn't matter. Look, what, if I own a business, it's the fruit of my labor, okay? If I'm participating in commerce, uh, trades of goods and services with another free, independent human being, all right, just because I somehow cross 
an imaginary line written on a map by people long since dead, this document gives people, again, in a far off land, the authority to tell me what I can or cannot do with my business, how I can run it, what I can do, all right? That is awesome. That's completely legal. And on a side tangent, the Bill of Rights do nothing to protect us from the powers of Congress, especially the Commerce Clause. Line four, the establishment of a uniform rule of naturalization. Look, we're all human beings on this planet. Now, you could, there's evidence to support that even the Native Americans weren't originally here. They migrated from Asia thousands of years ago and all that jazz. It doesn't matter. You have the right to travel and to live wherever you want to live. These people have no right to tell someone else that they can't live here or anywhere else. We're all human beings living on this planet, floating in space around a big ball of gas, all right? We're all human beings. We should have the right to travel, and there shouldn't be restrictions on that, period. <sighs> Line five, to coin money and regulate the value thereof. Now, mind you, I think the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional. Probably anyone watching this probably would say, well, yeah, of course the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional. But let me throw this out here. Do you really want the Treasury or Congress controlling the currency too? I mean, I don't trust the Secretary of the Treasury or Harry Reid or John Boehner any more than I trust the Federal Reserve Chairman. I mean, they're all corrupt. I don't want them controlling the currency. Let the free market decide what currency you use. Now, I'm an advocate of cryptocurrencies. I love Bitcoin and Litecoin, but use gold or silver or whatever. What any business wants to use should be able to use. And the only reason why they do this is because it's a form of control. It's used for taxation purposes, and it shouldn't exist. Let people use the currency they want to use. Stop using their money, you know. Um, I want to steal a thing from Derek J. The U.S. government uses that money to, they use taxation and whatnot. They use that money to bomb people. You know, if another place wanted to, a place I shop at decided to use uh, that money to bomb people, I wouldn't shop there anymore. And that's the same thing with this. I don't want to use their money because they're using that money to kill people that I disagree with. It's that I disagree with the whole notion that someone can control a currency. It's ridiculous and it shouldn't exist. Um, skipping ahead, uh, line 11, to declare war, really? They legalize murder. Now, <sighs> I'm the full advocate of the non-aggression principle, and be honest, I probably go a little too far with it. I'm okay with people using deadly force to protect themselves, and I'm okay with people, uh, with individuals getting together, even forming a militia to protect their liberties. I'm 100% okay with that. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I do have a problem with people calling themselves Congress, saying they represent me, uh, using money that they stole from me to take people from here, put them on another part of the planet, and kill people, call it war, and it's somehow legal to murder somebody. I'm all in favor of self-defense, but I'm against using aggression and using violence to murder people and calling it war. It's ridiculous, and it should, no one should have the ability to do so. And of course, line 18, which is the last one, uh, to make laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers. Basically, they can write more documents, more laws, more pieces of paper saying how they can or cannot, oh, how they can enforce all this. And again, all those things I just listed, none of that's protected by the Bill of Rights. Not a damn one of them. In fact, part of the Bill of Rights actually enforces this. Now, at the one minute mark, Dr. Vieira goes on. He discusses how the Bill of Rights is a limiting document. Again, I'll give him... Well, I'll give him some credit. Yes, Congress shall write no law of respecting freedom of speech and write the bare arms, Fourth Amendment, how they have to get a warrant. I, I, I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not against any of that. Um, but at the same time, there's parts of the Bill of Rights that I don't agree with. Uh, I mean, the Fifth Amendment is a doozy if you haven't read it. Um, I'm going to uh, jump ahead part of the uh, Fifth Amendment. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... Uh, basically, you should not be deprived of your life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. Well, if the law says that they can steal from you, and they went through a court system, they can steal from you. It's due process, and they can have men in costumes and guns come to your house 
and if you don't comply, they'll take you because you haven't been complying with the taxes that somehow these people think that they can steal from you. And that is law, and that's part of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, that the Fifth Amendment is literally go, uh, supporting the powers of Congress. It's not protecting you, it's supporting it. Uh, also part of the, of the Fifth Amendment is the eminent domain. That somehow, because these group of people can give you a just compensation for your land or property, as long as it's for public use, that they can take it. Now, we're getting to the point where the government would literally give you some money that they think is appropriate and take your land and give it to a business because they think they can make more money in taxes off of it. That's what they're doing. The Supreme Court has held that up. They're doing that around the country. Uh, I'm sorry, but no one has the right to steal from me. I don't care if they offer me a million dollars for a little tiny piece of land. If I don't want to sell, I don't have to. You know, Just because you offer to give me something means nothing to me. Um, now, also the Tenth Amendment. All right, I used to be a big fan of the Tenth Amendment. I'm not anymore. Uh, I want to read it. The power not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or the people. Not I agree with the people part, but not the state part. Basically, what they're saying is, if Congress can somehow if they don't have the, if they forgot something, if they forgot a power that they didn't give themselves, somehow a state government can write something on a piece of paper to take that power instead of it leaving it to the people. I didn't give Congress any authority to do this, and I sure as hell didn't give state capital, the state legislator, to do the exact same thing. I mean, I live in Illinois, and there's like, they're stealing every liberty they can possibly can at this point. And, uh, yeah, I don't, the Tenth Amendment, yes, it can be used to go against the federal government when they overstep their bounds, but at the same time, it's a double-edged sword. It allows them to write laws of powers that they didn't think of at the time when they wrote the Constitution, and the state capitals, the state legislators shouldn't have that power to begin with. All right, at the two-minute mark, he goes on and he says, we delegated certain powers. I didn't delegate anything, all right? You can make an argument that the people at the time of the Constitution and the, con the ratification and all that jazz, that jazz, they delegated those powers, but I didn't. I want to use an analogy. Um, imagine your father signed a contract with other people for certain goods or services or debt or whatever you want to say. Are you responsible for what your father's actions or your grandfather's actions? No. You're an independent human being. You're not responsible for what your ancestors did, your predecessors. You're not responsible for it. And I'm not responsible for the document that the, you know, the founders of this country set up. I wasn't alive then. I wasn't there. It shouldn't have any bearing on me. Now, at 206, he goes on and says, What happens when they don't enforce this document? I wish they wouldn't enforce it. Please stop enforcing the powers of Congress. I would love that. All right. Now I, I know he. I'm I'm being facetious here because he's really talking about the Bill of Rights that are not enforcing that. I, I I get that, but at the same time, there's powers of Congress that should not be enforced. And let's face it, Congress force they use the their uh, cafeteria constitutionalists. They enforce what they want to enforce. They enforce the stuff that they that are in there, and the stuff they don't like, they don't enforce. I can't stand it. I can't stand the powers that they do enforce, and yeah, they should enforce some civil liberties, but at the same time, they're enforcing stuff that are completely legal, and it shouldn't be legal. Um, now, also, again, uh, later on, he also says about the Tenth Amendment can protect us. Again, it can't. It, it can nullify some laws, but at the same time, that's not stopping you know, Illinois or any other state from having its own version of Obamacare. They can do it just because the federal government can't or whatnot. It's ridiculous. No one has the authority to control your life, regardless if it's the Congress or a state legislature. Now, uh, at the end, he talks about the base pyramid uh, of the electorate and the militia. Um, I'm paraphrasing. It was, if people don't play the roles of the electorate, then we will see further negligence and more incentive for the feds to work outside the Constitution. 
how about we just stop letting people have control over other people? Let people live their lives. Um, I think we should go down to just the people, period. Let me live my life. Leave me alone. Now, for the last, over the last 200 years, the people of North America, of the United States, have had elections. And since then, it's got progressively, progressively worse. And it's gotten to the point where we're almost becoming slaves to the state for, for the most part. Now, mind you, we, there's been some progress. You know, we ended child slavery, thank God. Um, you know, women have more rights and there's a lot of other civil liberties, but it seems like every time we take one foot forward, at the same time we're taking like five, five feet back. And elections aren't doing anything. In fact, most people don't even vote. And at what point, at what point, like right now, I think, what, what did Obama win? Like 20% of the pop, uh, of the, of the general population's vote because only like 45 or 46% of the people even voted. Um, at what point does where the voting is so small that people still have this myth in their head that people in a far off land because someone held an election that they have this authority. I mean, if they had a hundred percent vote, it doesn't matter. Just because you had an election doesn't mean that you can do these powers against me or any other human being. Um, on that note, uh, because he go, he talks about how we delegated these powers, these limited powers. Well, me and my buddies, we had an election and we wrote up a document and we voted on it, 100% uh, turnout and 100% vote for this. Uh, I'm pulling a Larkin Rose, so give him some credit, this is my idea, but it's a great idea. Um, we wrote down a document and it says, I have the delegated power to steal from you. Now don't worry, we'll change this to tax so it sounds more pleasant. All right, peace guys.